Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to the National Park Adventure Crossing America. Today, we're in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the island of Hawaii. Thanks so much to the park and the National Park Foundation for allowing us to be here today. And we're here with Ranger Jody. Hey, Ranger. Aloha, Dr. Drizzle. Thanks so much for having us here today. You're very welcome. So, Ranger Jody, we've met a couple years ago on a Zoom call, I believe. Yeah. And you were actually standing in front of a volcano, and I was so excited to possibly meet you one day. And today we're filming our 123rd National Parks Expedition Challenge and our Crossing America series. So before we get started on this amazing place, can you tell me how you got into the National Park Service? Sure. I grew up doing a lot of outdoor activities. And after I graduated from college and actually majored in film production, I really um, enjoyed more working at summer camps and I sought a way to work at summer camps year round. So I actually applied to some places in Australia. Um, it was difficult to get a job there, but then I discovered environmental education and I worked for nonprofit environmental education organizations for many years. I didn't really think about getting a job at the National Park Service until much later. Um, at one point, I did go back and do some media production as well. And then I, just on a whim, saw an opening at Cape Cod National Seashore for a seasonal park ranger position. I applied and I was lucky enough to get it. I found out two weeks before the start date that I got the position. So I worked there for 14 years, eventually getting a permanent position. I became a supervisor for interpretation. And then I really wanted to work with school groups again. So I started applying to education positions and I was lucky enough to get the position at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And now I've been here for four years. So coast to coast, if you will. That's right. Um, I love that you like the idea of being near water because obviously you're here and I love that you love working in the education department because that's what I do, right? Yes. Um, this is a beautiful place, but we're on something very unique that we're not usually around during our filming. So tell us a little bit about Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Um, what makes it special? Sure. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park was established in 1916, the same year that the National Park Service was established, and it actually included Haleakala as part of the park at the time. It was established to be able to allow people to experience the wonders of geology, including active volcanoes like this one. Also biology, there's amazing biodiversity in the park. It's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an International Biosphere Reserve. And finally, Hawaiian culture, so that people can learn about and appreciate Hawaiian culture. Well, talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing behind us and what's happening right now with this. Sure, we're actually standing on Kilauea Volcano right now. We're at 4,000 foot elevation and we're looking down into what's called the caldera or the top of the volcano that has collapsed in. And within the caldera, there is a deeper crater called the Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater, believed to be the home of Pele. And you can see that we do have an active eruption right now. So there are steam and gases coming up out of the crater. And further in the background, we have another active volcano because our island is made up of five volcanoes. Another active volcano not currently erupting, but it will erupt some point in the future is Mauna Loa. It's much taller than Kilauea. It's over 13,000 feet. And the park encompasses both of these active volcanoes. So obviously these volcanoes are a big draw here. Um, about how many people come to Hawaii Volcanoes in a year? 
Sure, we can get visitation between one to two million in a normal year. So they come to see the volcanoes, but you also talked about the biodiversity of this place. So can you tell us a little bit about the flora and the fauna, these plants and animals that we might find when we're here? Sure, the National Park encompasses quite a few different types of habitats. One that we're in right now is considered a rainforest, but there are some drier areas as well, and we, the park goes all the way down to the coast where the ocean is. And within these habitats, there are many very unique plants and animals. And that's one of the reasons the park has such a distinction of being a World Heritage Site. So there are some native plants and animals. Some of them are considered endangered or threatened. And unfortunately, there are also many invasive plants and animals. And that's one of the things that a lot of places struggle with in the world. It's particularly pronounced on islands because things like that can happen very fast. Right. We, while at Haleakala, we found out that things come either by wings, wind, or waves. That's right. So if there's something here that's invasive, someone had to bring that here. Um, are there, can you tell us about any of the invasive plants that are here? Sure. One of the worst ones we have is called Himalayan ginger. Um, it has a beautiful flower. It smells very nice and people do like to grow it. It's just that when you plant it in an area like this, it grows out of control. It has rhizomes that move underground and the plants pops up and it's very difficult to get rid of. It's actually considered one of the most 100, uh, the top 100 most invasive species in the world. Do you have any favorite native plants here? Sure, one of the most uh, precious native plants we have is a tree called the Ohia Lehua. And we have some around us now that are in bloom. It has a red bottle brush looking flower. It is one of the most important trees in our forest. It can actually be a pioneer plant that grows on lava, and then it be can become the dominant tree in our forest as well. It's important culturally, and it is a habitat and feeds some birds as well, the nectar from the flowers. So we've talked about the plants here, but let's go and move towards the animals. Before we talk about the invasive or the things that are, are hurting um, the area around here, can we talk about some native um, animals here that are just fun? Sure. Well, I know you learned about the nene, the Hawaiian goose, and we have nene here that are a threatened species, but they are recovering and that's wonderful. It's something that the park strives to protect. There are also marine animals like sea turtles and the Hawaiian monk seal that we can see from our park. There are native birds. There are different types of honey creepers like apapane, who we might be hearing now flying around, and some that are up at a higher elevation. And those are some of my favorite of the native animals. Well, it's always fun to come to a national park and see the beauty around us, the natural resources. But we also know that just like with the invasive plants, we sometimes have things in the animal world that are in a national park that are threatening other animals. So let's go there if we can. So can we talk about some of the challenges that we face here? Sure. There are animals that were either accidentally introduced or they were brought here and people didn't realize how much harm they would do. An example is the mongoose that was brought here to try to reduce the rat population, which was something that was accidentally introduced. But mongoose and rats are active at different times of the day. So now we just have a lot of rats and a lot of mongoose. Well, I also heard that you have issues with what they call feral cats. That's right. Feral cats are an issue around the world, but on a place like Hawaii, because it is an island that is trying to protect native species, cats can do a lot of damage. So feral cats are cats that have derived from originally from stray cats, cats that people accidentally lost outside or they abandoned them outside. And then when they become feral, they're more wild. And all cats, even when they're well fed, have a predator instinct. So they are going to hunt. And one of the things that they like to hunt are birds. Oh no. So you're actually seeing these feral cats catch birds and, and kill those? They do. And 
Are they the nenes? They can catch nene, especially the young nene. And they can catch some of our native honey creepers. Um, cats actually live all the way up the slopes of Mauna Loa. So a fence was built around Mauna Loa to protect one type of bird called the uau, the Hawaiian petrel. Um, cats also spread a disease called toxoplasmosis, and that can affect the Hawaiian monk seal, the nene. It even affects humans. Oh, wow. So let's go ahead and talk to our kids for a moment, and then we'll come back to you if that's okay. So kids, you know that we try to tackle challenges that the national parks face because we want you to be good stewards of the park. We want you to feel like the parks belong to you because they do. So right now at Hawaii Volcanoes, they have a challenge and it is the feral cats challenge. So we're gonna tie these to the United Nations sustainability goals of number 15, which is life on land, and number three, which is good health and well-being because we just found out they carry a disease. Now this is gonna be a little bit different because you're not gonna be actually able to move cats from um, the Hawaii Volcanoes Island. But let's find out what are some solutions you're using now, and then we'll see if our students can come up with some new ideas for you. Sure, well, some of the things that actually could apply to other parts of the world as well are that cats should be spayed or neutered so that they are not mating, breeding out of control. They should be kept indoors. So if we find cats in a part of the park they shouldn't be, we can relocate them. We can bring them to humane societies, shelters for animals. And it's very important that people do not feed wild cats or any wildlife because that will encourage them to keep coming around to that spot and they'll get more used to humans and handouts. And we know that with the cats, especially, there's that disease that they could transfer, That's right? right. So here's some ideas that I'm thinking about also. Even if you never visit Hawaii volcanoes, you can help them by looking in your own community and seeing if you see any wildlife there that is actually wild and it shouldn't be. So think about stray cats you may see in your community. Do you see those out? Do you see dogs walking down the street with no collars? One of the first things you can do is talk to your parents or the people that you live with and say, hey, there's two cats in our backyard and there's no collars and I'm not sure who they belong to. Together, you can make some decisions. You can call the Humane Society. You could put an ad in the paper. You can walk around to houses in your community and say, hey, did you lose this yellow cat? Nine times out of 10, it may be a lost cat or a lost dog that just needs to find their way home. Another way you can help is, I know everyone just loves dogs and cats. And sometimes you can walk through a pet store and get real excited because you wanna buy the little ball of yellow fur and take it home and you're very excited and you're promising mom and dad that you're gonna feed it and you're gonna take care of it. But after a while, you decide you don't wanna take care of it anymore. So if you wanna be a pet owner, make sure that you understand all of the responsibility that comes with that. And if you're no longer able to take care of that cat, for goodness sakes, please don't just let it out into the wild. That's cruel and unusual punishment for the cat or the dog. Think of ways that you can find someone else to take that cat or dog from you, or just be a good human, and that also means being good to animals, and take care of the animals that you have. Always report, though, wild animals that you see, because as Ranger Jody spoke, some animals carry diseases, and that's gonna be a harm to your own pets around the neighborhood and also to kids that are around the neighborhood that may wanna go up and pet an animal that they're not really sure about. We know that in other national parks, they have this same problem with other types of animals. Um, there are wild boar or wild pigs in some of the parks. Here we, too. Yeah, so <laughs> we have an invasive Burmese python where people buy these from a pet store and then decide after a couple years they don't want it anymore and they just let it go. 
So I think kids are the best ones to try to solve these types of problems because they do really care about the earth and each other. So if we can get these students to start putting their brains together and coming up with ideas. We know that Ranger Jody and all of the staff here would love to find out your ideas on how to take care of the feral cat issues they have here. So once you come up with your ideas, whether it be a prototype or a poster or a slogan or just an idea you want to write down, we want you to share this on social media. Share it with us at hashtag expeditions and education. We also want you to tag the National Park Foundation and also make sure that you're tagging the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park because they're going to see these ideas too. And you never know, you might get a phone call from Ranger Jody asking you to share your idea with more staff here at the park. You know, these are kids, right? Mm -hmm. They're in K-12. They're not in the National Park Service yet as rangers. But boy, let me tell you. We have students from all over the world that are excited about being in some type of national park work because they love that hat. <laughs> they love the badge that you get. They're probably very jealous right now that we're standing in front of an active volcano. Can you look in that middle camera, Ranger Jody, and give them some advice on how they can start preparing for service with the national parks? Sure, it's a wonderful job. And so as a young person, you can get outdoors, be very observant. In Hawaii, we say kilo. Observe what's around you. Use all your senses and decide if you like being outdoors. There's a lot of different types of jobs at national parks. So when you get into school, you might decide you want to study history. You might decide you want to study science or law enforcement. And then start looking at volunteer programs at national parks. You can actually volunteer as young as 16 if you have your parents or guardians permission and parks love to work with young people. Those are some great ideas. I know the kids are probably journaling those right now because they want to work in the national parks. And even if they don't find a career in the national parks, just getting out in nature and understanding that we are all stewards of nature and we need to make sure we're taking care of it for our grandchildren, our great grandchildren and so on. Don't you think? Definitely, it's very important. Yeah. So I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. A special thanks to the National Park Foundation and the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park for allowing us to be here and Ranger Jody. It's been about two years and now we're finally here standing in front of this volcano. Thanks again for having us You're and we can't welcome. wait to share the ideas that the students come up with around the country. Mahalo, thank you for being here. So on behalf of Dr. Drizzle and Ranger Jody, we are out of here.